One of our subscribers asked, could you give some tips for doing backgrounds? We'll do just that. Well, there is no formula that's going to give you a good background. In fact, using that word background is misleading because even though I know what you're talking about, and probably you're talking more about still life painting than anything else, what we're seeing around a subject is a part of its environment. So for us to try to separate that, make it two things instead of one, creates kind of a, a, a mentality of separation and might cause a separation in the painting itself. So let's think of, first of all, let's think of backgrounds as an environment. I want to advise you to look at, to study artists who are really effective with doing still life paintings. The one that comes to mind is Richard Schmidt. And I, actually, if you look at Richard Schmidt's still life paintings, and just look at what he does with that background and how the background, what we're calling background, relates to the subject itself. You see they're totally interrelated. They're not separated at all. And, and so, uh, and then you might go to some other master painters who, do, um, who, who know what they're doing with still life painting. But don't think that you can create backgrounds by using a formula or by separating the background from the subject itself. Now, with that in mind, I want to give you just a few pointers of how you might look at doing backgrounds. First of all, the one thing that I see uh, done with backgrounds that is most distracting is all the strokes going in the same direction. Now, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. First of all, let me just, I'm just going to set up here just because this is a quick tip, it's not a demonstration, it's not a painting demonstration. I'm just going to set up here my favorite thing to, my favorite image for demonstrating a principle with, and that's just a, we'll just set up kind of a little cylinder here, and we'll call that our still life. But I can use that to illustrate a point. Okay, and let's say that our painting, um, it, it, we will set some parameters here, and we could say that, um, we could say that the painting is going to this if, if I had a if I were doing a painting of a still of a cylinder and it was going to be this wonderful still life painting okay kind of sit like that and usually what we're going to see is we're going to see um, uh, images sitting on the surface now we have what the tra traditionalists might call foreground background and subject well let's think of that as a whole now what's the first thing I said background brush strokes I see so many times uh, backgrounds that have just have the it's like a wall painted and the background won't relate to the subject at all but that's not the only reason to watch your brush strokes because the brush stroke reflects the light and and so if you have um, alternating brush strokes you're gonna have the light reflected in more interesting ways than if you just do it like house painting I'll just give you an example of what I'm talking about but before I do that I gotta talk about two more things because I want to work these in together. Light source. <laughs> There's my favorite thing and those who study with me know that's my favorite thing. We need to be able to, when we look at a painting, we should be able also to know exactly where the light source is. The painting should tell us that. And so, the, but the light source also is going to determine what happens back here in the background. Now, so we're considering light source, and there's one other thing we can consider when working with that backgrounds, and this is a way to integrate uh, the subject with the background, and that is find ways to allow lights from the subject to actually blend into lights from the background, and darks from the subject blend into darks from the background. Now, with those three pointers in mind, let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm just going to do it very, very simple. Uh, little illustration here just to show you what I'm talking about. First of all, um, I'm just going to use some, some sort of neutral colors. And so first of all, um, let's assume let's assume that the light source, okay, where could the light source be coming from? Um, we'll have the light source coming from up here. That's, that's kind of a traditional place to place uh, to put the light source when you're doing a demonstration. So I'll just have the light source coming from right here. It'll be my eyes looking at it. So what's going to happen to that image 
what's going to happen to that uh, background image if the light source is hitting right here? Well, it's going to be darker over here, for one thing. Light's hitting this way. It's going to be darker over here. And, let's just, let's just, let's just go ahead and, 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 and work with the background. Now, here's what I'm talking about as far as the strokes go. Here's what I'm talking about. Not this. Paint that background like it's as important to the subject as the subject is itself. Alright, so then you look at how you stroke that background in. And one good way, if it's just a solid white, a solid background of some color, one good way is to use what I call the crisscross strokes. And that is where you simply allow your brush, and if you watch really closely, you'll see the difference here, where you allow your brush to crisscross in, in very various directions as you move across the surface. And, and also, if uh, pay attention to this. If the light source is here, it's going to get gradually lighter as it moves in that direction. And so we would pay attention to that, knowing that the light source is going to hit the surface and it's going to gradually get lighter as it goes over here. Now, there's nothing like observation. I'm kind of making this up as I go to show you a principle. But if you observe what's happening and you respond to what you observe, you're going to be much better off on that one. All right, so uh, as you get down to... This, to the subject itself. You see here we've got these crisscross strokes. Now I'll allow a stroke to, to touch the subject. I'll pull it up, but I don't want that, I don't want that um, background either echoing the shape of the subject. That's another thing that we watch for. Another way to keep it united. What I mean by that, and I'll show you exactly what I mean. You don't want to do this like that and just leave it where the actual stroke e echoes the subject. The better way to do that is to lay the brush down and pull it away from the subject. Well, I could do it like that. And like that, sort of off. It doesn't matter how. You don't have to swing your brush the same way I'm swinging mine. It's just a matter of keeping that brush moving in alternating directions. Alright, so there we go there. Now, uh, and we will see if the light is shining on the subject at this direction then the light's going to hit back here more strongly back here but you see I keep those brush strokes moving in variations and then as we come down of course as it moves away from the subject where the light's moving away f away from the subject uh, it is getting darker so this is going to give us a, a bit more variation so uh, that then is a pretty generic background. Now, what did I mean by um, lights into lights and darks into darks? If the light is shining right here, if the light source is shining right here, that means over here it's going to start going around into shadow. I'm just going to show you very briefly what might be happening there to that, that cylinder. So about right in here, about right in there, the cylinder would begin to go into shadow. Now, what I mean about light and light and darks and darks to help unify that subject. Why can't we exaggerate just a little bit? Let's bring a little bit of the value, the same, the dark value. It doesn't have to be the same color, but let's bring a little bit of that dark value down and allow allow the dark of the subject to blend or merge or meld into the dark of the background and that way you keep them oh that's one way to help keep them united is to do that um, another way I said the lights hitting right over there and I say if this cylinder say this is the top of the cylinder right here so let's just kind of round that out and let that be sort of the top of the cylinder Let's get that just a little bit. There we go, right there. Now, if we had that sort of thing, another thing that you could do is to allow the value of the cylinder at some place to blend in or disappear. 
into the background. So the value in the subject would be the same as the value in the background. You can find strategic ways. To, it's called the lost edge. Some people call it the lost and found edge. But it's a strategic way to work um, a subject into a background and to have the two belong just like I was telling you or describing to you early, earlier where they are not separate. The background is an atmosphere or is a part of the subject. And so when you start thinking of them as one, not as separate, then you begin to look at them more differently. So to review, uh, we may start uh, at anywhere, any place here. All three of, of these are important. The light source. Where is the light source coming from? What's it doing to the background as well as what is it doing to the subject? The brush strokes. Using brush strokes that are not that are meaningful, that describe what you what the subject is doing, not just house painting type brush strokes. Lights to lights, lost edges, darks to darks. Those are just three suggestions I have for how you might handle backgrounds. Now there there are zillions of ways to handle backgrounds, but if you always take those three things into consideration, especially keeping in mind. It's not just a background, but it's an environment in which that subject lives. And as far as, far as the lost edges go, um, we have an entire series of video, uh, video tutorials about the lost edge, or how to work with lost edges. And if you just go to, um, to our website at dianemise.com, you can see uh, we have four lessons in that series, and they're all about different ways to work with the lost edge. Uh, and so also, if you have... Uh, Comment if you have something you'd like for me to do a quick tip about, something that you feel is puzzling, uh, drop us a comment right down here and I'll be happy to put it on the schedule. And there's your quick tip.